Hello everybody, how is everybody today? Hopefully everyone's fine. Sorry, no introduction no introduction video at the start of it of the video um, of this show. Uh, it's been a challenging week. Um, a lot of bad things have been happening on this side. Not with me in particular, or well, sort of. Um, I'll get into it in a moment. Um, quick hello to everybody here. Um, we got G'day Dwight, you get the cookie Tammy and Ray, how are ya? John Knuff, how are ya? And welcome in here uh, Ray got tuna cookies Yeah, tuna cookies I don't know, I think that might go with frogs Frogs milk or, milk or mayonnaise um, Yeah, I'm going to wait till everybody else comes in Um G'day, Steve. Peace, Sap. How are you? It's not Saturday and I'm eating dinner. Catch you another time. Okay. Just a quick heads up. Um, unfortunately, I will not be able to attend um, the Filmy Steam Festival this weekend. Um, I will do a reminder for everybody again after the show and during it. G'day, Thomas. How are you? I've had an old buddy, a very good friend of mine, and um, a beloved person in our road train trucking community. Um, he had a massive, he had a nasty accident last week out in another ball going across the paddock in his road train. Um, I'm getting picked up on Friday to go down to South Australia for his funeral next week. Um, so I will not even be doing uh, my Wacky Weekend show this coming weekend. Sorry, folks. Um, I sincerely apologise about that, but, I mean, I need to, we need to go and see, you send off um, giving the last wishes and everything else with them. Um, it was a nasty, nasty accident. Um his truck was totally, um, I won't show the full video, but um, he had a nasty head on. Um, there's nothing left of the truck. Um, I'm still trying to get, I'm still trying to get my head around it um poor bugger didn't stand a chance um no that's not what i wanted um g'day chris how are you um oh neville i mean I only saw it the other day on the video, but um, let me just get that enlarged. Um, that's what's... Let me enlarge that. That's what's um, left of his prime mover. Uh, the blue bit that you see there is his prime mover. The rest of it is the trailer. Um, that's the other truck he had, and that's his truck. Um, nasty pile up. Um, nasty pile up. Um, in the middle of basically nowhere. Um, yeah, crap. Yeah, it didn't stand a chance. Um, I spent nearly 20, 25 years going across. Um, Neville, he helped me out of a few of binds and whatnot in my early days when I started and when I was working across the Nullarbor. A real good chap he was. He helped out everybody, good old school. You know, I've got to go down and give him, pay the last respects. There's a few of us going down there from here, from the east coast into adelaide um 
the long haul trucking community, in particular with the road train drivers that go across the paddock, we are like this train community. We are uh, a very close knit family, even though we don't see each other very often. Uh, we are a family. Um, when one one passes or gets hurt, we all hurt. Um, still not clear what happened. We got an idea. Um, yeah, it is bad. Um, the nearest fire, the nearest first responder from where that happened is roughly about. Um, nearest hospital is roughly about five six hundred kilometers away. It's a halfway across Australia. There's nothing there. Uh, prayers to his family and everybody else. Um, so, please again, people understand. I will not be doing the live stream this weekend. I will not be home. And I'm sorry. I know there was a lot of you guys that wanted were expecting the bit, the live stream, particularly young Ray. I'm so sorry. I will try to make up for it somewhere along the line. Um, hopefully, Train Spotted Barry will be up there, so we'll, I'll be able to use some of his content to share what it was like um, in Next Cap Crew Wednesday. Okay, so what's been happening on my side here? Uh, the layout construction work has gone on strike because of the working conditions under the layout. Um, <laughs> uh, g'day, Delmar, how are you? Delmar, oh, geez, I'm not, not a bit tongue tied. Um, yeah, um, I'm still working on the layout, don't, don't get me wrong, it's just. I'm having problems because I'm in cramped up space. I've got to keep moving things around. So what I've actually done was I just stopped working on the actual layout itself because um, I've got totes and boxes and whatnot sits underneath it. So what I have actually done is I made a platform with wheels on it so I can actually move things around. So I'll show you guys what I've done um, with great difficulty. With the help of Pixie, I made these made this rolling platform. So I can actually put the totes on top of here and move it around underneath the underneath the table. Yes, Pixie gave me a helping hand to put it together. It's just going to make it easier to put a whole heap of things um, underneath it and I'll be able to move it around and I can get up in my little pop-ups. Um, thank you, Tammy. I'm sorry. I know Ray really, really wanted me to go up there. I will make an attempt to go up to the Maitland one, which I haven't been to yet, um, not for a while, so I'll try to get up to that one. That's later on. Um, that be coming up soon too. Um, 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 well, the thing is, there's too much gravel to use that as a skateboard around here. We did have big rains last weekend, and uh, <laughs> no, it's not going to be used as a skateboard. But I'm going to be able to shift it underneath the, ta underneath the table because I space in the back room for those who have seen it, it's at a premium. So everything's underneath. And you know what it's like when you keep sliding boxes and a lot of times they're in the way. But now I've started going through and sorting out all the boxes. Um, thank God it was midnight last night. So I end up filling up all the – G'day, Eric, how are you? Um, so I started cleaning out some of the boxes and making some more space. So just reduced the shelf. I've made two of them, so that's going to make things a lot easier. Um, I'm just about ready to put everything back onto it, um, uh, and then get underneath the layout. I have got some, um, connectors from Amazon. Hang on, I'll be back in a minute again. Um, 
because that new section of wiring underneath is like a um uh, like an Italian restaurant. Spaghetti wires everywhere. And um because I've got to tidy up the wiring, I've got these connectors from Amazon. I don't normally shop on Amazon, but I found these um I'm gonna make more space. More like that, yeah. Uh, one thing I like about these is they're individual. Let me they're individual, but they lock into one another. Now I've got to try it on come and bring it undone. Um but they lock in, so I can actually make it up nice and easy. I don't have to screw it around with it, so they just come up as two separate pieces. And they're just simple clips. I don't have to worry about screwing the wires or whatnot, and which takes a lot of time. Wire just slides in, clips it down, and off we go. Um, I've got two packs of these, and I've got some more coming. I thought they were a great idea. Um, so I've got some more coming. I bought another two packs, and I've got I've got two here, but I've got another two packs coming up, uh, which will be coming today. Um, so I can fix up the wiring, tidy that up, and then gradually start putting things in the place. Um, which I'll try to get done. What's today? Thursday. I want to get a fair bit done today because I'm not. I'm going to lose time this coming weekend because I'm not going to be home, um, and I won't be back home till probably mid to late next week. Um, as I'm going down by road by um, a truck driver friend of mine, um, and of course I'll be coming back home with him. So, yeah, storage space is in the premium. I do have to make another one or two of them, but now I'm thinking, like, under the old section, the original section I started off with, I've got boxes underneath there too. So what I'm thinking about doing is make some more of them up, and it's Thursday here. It's it's Thursday here. I know it's Wednesday there. It's what well, Wednesday night there, but it's Thursday here. Mm -hmm. So I you know it takes a bit to, uh, um, yeah, it gets confusing. Um, so I've only got basic today, and I've got half a day tomorrow. I mean, my bag's already packed. It doesn't take me more than pack my bag. I've uh, just asked Tammy. Um, I'm gonna have my bag packed in a couple of hours. Um, so once I get everything out, um, get them, yeah. Um, once once I get everything underneath, I can start getting stuck into it um, and start sorting out the elevations and label track. <laughs> but it should work pretty well. Um I'm hoping it is. I mean, I, it's taken a lot of thought into it, and it's like, well, I've got to do something. I've got to come up with something. She's that heavy. Um, so progress. I mean, plus, good day, Grandpa Rails. How are you? How are you, JD? Plus, another thing is I've got to make some room, easy room in there because I am getting a visit at the end of the, in the next month. Um it's a bit messy in there. Um, when I get back in the following weekend, I'll do a tour in the layout. Um, I, it's very, very messy. I mean, even Pixie, like, had a look in there to try to sneak in. She's like, no, nah, I'm not going in there. No way in the world. Get a Dave Carolina. Good. He was there, were you? I mean, when Pixie says no, that means no. Uh, and <laughs> All right. Um, excuse me. I'm going to just have to turn the camera off for a minute. Oh, sorry about that, people. All right. Um, 
<coughs> I'm not dying yet. Okay. Um, now, I'll try to go for an hour. Um, okay, I'm going to share a video from um, Train Spotting with Barry. Um, I'll put his link, link up up here. Um, uh, here's a really great, he's not really local um, to me, uh, but he does live on my line. He lives up in Sydney on the south side, trains in Australia. Yeah. Um, now, what I'm going to share is now Australia or, or Randa Airline, we used a lot of electric locomotives um, for freight and passenger services with this, with the electric network. There were some of them that were used into my area here uh, for the coal duties and the 46s were used at some point in time to do some freight between here and Sydney when the electrification opened up between Sydney and down to, down to the Illawarra or down to Port Kimbler. Um, I'm going to share the, one of the videos, a montage that he's actually got, um, and uh, we'll gradually talk away as um, as he shows the, uh, the trains of, um, okay, Hang on. Um, the electric locomotives we used to have. They, uh, you would say, be like um, on the east coast of, in the northeast corridor, you used to have the, um, in the bed. Okay, Eric, good night, buddy. Um, yeah, okay. Um, well, the GG1s and what were the other ones? Um, Conrail. And uh, Penn Central had uh, those electric um, locomotives uh, on the Northeast Corridor. We actually had, what, one, two, three, three different types or three different classes. Um, uh, okay. Get out, Papa John. How are you? Um, they were more like the Alcos. Um, I from the past Wednesday. Yeah. Now, I do have some of these. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the February edition of From the Lens. In this episode, we check out what's rolled under the wires with the New South Wales spark-driven locomotives, the 46, 85s and 86 class locomotives. Thanks to Diesel Day for requesting this video. Stay tuned to the end for a channel update on what's coming up this month. Enjoy the montage. Yeah, these 46s, they were used a lot better than what the downers. This one's in the reverse colour scheme. We were known as reverse colour scheme. That was a colour scheme before they went to candy. Now, these ones. When they used two panographs going up the blue mountains, they used to have to draw that much power. Um, and the panographs actually use itself to the machinery. Yeah, they did. They did look old. They did for a run of them. They looked great. I think there's only one or two of them still in existence. One currently being restored, and some of this goes, it's getting restored to um, operating condition, so it should be ready in the next few years. Real 
real dirty ones generally 46 of the finished their lives off mate right here Now this is showing up in daylight. Uh, Fifteen hundred watts volts there, Dylan. I'd like to take this quick opportunity to welcome all our new subscribers to the channel and give a shout out to our channel members and Patreons. If you'd like to get extra content and a look behind the scenes, why not consider becoming a Patreon or channel member? For as little as $2 you could unlock lots of different perks. Just a quick plug for our t-shirts and other merch. All of our sales go to making our content better, so if you're interested in purchasing anything, check out the link in the description below. Now, Barry does travel a fair bit around the place, so it does pay who will pay it. Now, that engine next to it, these are the 85s. They basically store duty on um, freight service, and now that's the 86. These were the last thing built. They were worked on both freight and passenger. Um, down here, they used it with the car run. Let's go up through the blue mountains. There's still, I think, five or six of these still in existence, but they've actually scrapped the rest of them. There's one in Central Station. I believe in my collection I've got eight of these, 86 they were also commonly used to go up the blue mountain in the city as well. Yeah, the old beast in the back right there. Hey, hey, how are you? It's the old central station before it was revamped. At the time, these electric locomotives were one of the most powerful electric locomotives in the southern hemisphere. off in the front row of blue colours. Yes. Coming up this month we visit Dialek and Enfield Yard. We check out Mortuary Station with some train spotting from 1989 and we look at freight down the Illawarra line with the Illawarra Freight Artery. There'll be a few surprises as well. If you liked that video why not check out this one. Until next time remember Sometimes the wrong train can take you to the right place. Now and check out the rest of his content. He's got some fantastic content in there. Um, some new ones, some old ones as well. I love, love his old videos. So go and check him out. Um, he's got... It brings back a lot of memories of the old Central Station and all the old freight trains we used to run. Um, along the line, um, ran with the Sydney network down here up over the Blue Mountains. A lot of my um, electric trains, yes, they will make a great layout replica. Eventually, on the next layout, I will actually have um, continuary on it, which I'm slowly gathering bit by bit. Um, just hard to get enough continuary, plus, it's expensive so. I'm gradually collecting all the continuity on it. 
I'm not going to do it on this layout. I was, but I'm not going to do it because it's going to get pulled apart. And um, that continuity wire and everything else is expensive. So I'm just gathering stuff up, putting in a little storage box, and uh, we'll be using the next layout. Um, okay, I'll put up an invite for people to come up. I'll be up for at least another half hour. So if you want to come up and have a general chat, you're more than welcome to. G'day there, um, Rick, how are you, buddy? Nice to see you in here. Uh, just put the um, link up if you, anyone wants to come in, have a bit of a chit-chat. So, yeah, the 86s and the 85s, the 85s are used a lot on the freight and the coal. Um they originally started off with two engines and they finished off with four electrics. As I used to say, look, on this on the south coast line, in the Blue Mountains line, it's in the part of the passenger network. And apart from the and the freight trains used to, particular coal trains, were snuck in, in between the passenger services. So the freight trains had to maintain and have a quick accelerate, acceleration speed um, so it not help hold up the timetable or the passenger trains. And it worked pretty well. So from two engines, I went to four. Um, I do remember the lockdown, the coal loader, we used to have at least two coal trains an hour, sometimes three on a weekend. Um, but now it's all cut down to probably five coal trains um, a day in a 12-hour period. So the coal exports has um, quite substantially diminished in this area. We, even though we've got good quality coal, um, there's n we're not seeing that much coal traffic anymore. We do get some from Tamil, which is up near Thilmy. G'day, postmodern, how are you? Um, I wouldn't mind having a nicey freight. Um, great, JD. Oscision models um, and SDS models um, in Australia, they do do some nice um, replicas of Australian um, locomotives. Uh, depending on what area you want to go into, um, the 81 class locomotives, they're the most common... Oh, sorry. They were the most modern or start of the modern modern diesel fleet. Um, their US counterpart would be the um, SD40-2. It's got the same operating um, system in it, but it's just a carb body shell. But it's still basically the same locomotive state, the same components and everything else. And there was 81 of them built. So, um, and SDS it actually makes a beautiful model, beautiful operating model of that. I do have some, I do have uh, two in the back room, uh, but I need to sort that the track works so they can run properly. Something I'm working on at the moment. So, hopefully, by the time I get back, I can actually have the layout up and running, get something moving again in the back room. Because at the moment, I can't move in there. Um, so anyway, um, what else has he got? Um, okay, um, my phone's going off for some reason. Um, yeah, okay, so um, I'm running out of things to say. Um, all right, I've gone through that. Okay, um, I'll put a link up there again if anybody wants to come up and have a bit of a chat. Um, now, there, we did have um, tanker services in this country, but they pretty much ceased in the early 90s. Um, one thing is that they did do here in Australia, a lot of stuff ended up going in underground pipeline systems through the East Coast and whatnot. 
uh, and throughout the whole country. So we do not rely rely on um, tankers as much on the road, uh, on the rail. Uh, we do have tanker services on the road, but uh, that's basically just doing a service. Um, okay, I'm running out of things to say. It's a bit unfortunate for me. Okay. Um, right. Now, with the layout that I've done, that I'm doing, um, it is still going to be automated, semi-automated. Um, I don't know if anybody else has um, come across this during during modification or constructing. You know, you've got bits and pieces for the layout. Um, and you misplace it. Oh, here he is. There's someone up here. I can have Thomas. Um, Hello, I've had, everyone. I've had some of these tortoise motors, motors and I bought some. Is um, they're second hand tortoise motors. But they were missing the wires and the screws and the tensioning um, mechanism. You think I could find it? No. Wait a minute. What are you missing? You know those, uh, the green slides, you know, for the tension on the... Yeah, on they, the, can, they can be 3D printed. Yeah, but I know they can be 3D printed, but I bought a pack a while back. And I put him somewhere in a safe place. G'day, Joe Raider and Ken Amos. Yeah, um, but, yeah, you put him in a safe place, but you can't find him. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Take I'll put two. him here, and then, I'll, uh, then uh, when you need them, they're never around. I know. Exactly. And I've got yeah. three tortoise motors, three tortoise motors that are sitting there, and I particularly bought it for that. Mm -hmm. And, um, same as with me, AIU01. Look, I know I put it down somewhere. I put it somewhere for all the other electrical stuff. I should be able to pick it up and just use it. Right. I still got I've got still got six B D B twenties in the room somewhere. I haven't come across those six yet. Yeah. Um G'day Randall, how are you? And of course, with the AIU01, I end up finding it after I've done the order. Last night I was going through the emptying out some of the boxes because you know you accumulate boxes, you put stuff in and then put them aside. Right. Um, I'm going through one of the boxes and then I found the spare parts for the tortoise motors. There you go. I knew I had them. Now, only if those six BD20s will turn up, I'll be happy. There you go. Well, just a matter of like I had a clock, I have a closet to my right here. It's a double door and it pulls out like this, and the fan folds and stuff. And they had two shelves in there. Well, the two shelves, one shelf was full of three printing filament and stuff like that, all organized, you know. Top shelf is a bunch of stuff that I don't really ever get to, need to get to. I like a big bin of, fo of photos that I have. They're up there. And then I had on the floor... All, you know, whenever I get a shipment in the box, hey, that's a good size that I can use to put stuff in. Yeah. Right? And then I usually take a felt tip pen and write on it, you know, what it's for. And they're start, they were starting to pile up on top of each other. And I always needed the one on the bottom or the one in the middle and I had to move everything out to get to it. So I just put two shelves in there. I was going to do the whole length. The whole length of that, that closet is like, eight feet wide i was going to do the whole length but I, then i forgot that my creeper that i have i i break that down and i put that in the closet and it stands upright so i only could go halfway across this so yeah. i put i put two shelves now all the boxes are organized and on the floor i just have one row of boxes that i can get to so this well, matter of organizing things. And I found things that I said, oh, I need this. Oh, I need that. You know, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I've been waiting for that, but I've already put an order in for it. Like, I've done the order for um, the uh, for another AIU I won. Mm -hmm. I put in an order, at the same time, I've done an order with um, another six BD20s. I probably only need another three, four, but I just got extras because they're like, 
it's like any finding rock a rocking horse poop around here at the moment. You can't get a hold of it. Right. And I thought, well, what the heck? I'll go and buy because um, you can buy the spare parts pack with the wires and the screws and the tensioning spring, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but so, you already have them somewhere. So you found them, though. So you're good. But I found them now. So I can finish. I can actually put them in. I don't have to wait. I can put them right. into place. Um, but hang on, let me have a look who's pinging me. Someone's pinging me. Sorry, that's all right. Um, that's why my phone's on the desk. If somebody from the family contacts me, well, you know, I'm on a show, I know I can get to it right away. Yeah. Um, okay, all right. Okay, where um so you found your um tortoise machine parts. Yeah. Like, now you can get them together. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I have two tourist machines to install and two Cobalt IPs to install, yeah. Yeah, well, I'll just stick in the one brand because that way um, I can, um, what's the word? If something goes wrong, it's all going to be basically change. But I haven't done the harnesses for it, which I'll do at a later date. All I want to do now is just get it up and running. Mm -hmm. Um. So that drones are running. The, the, the harness is going to take a little bit of time to do, but I've, as long as I tidy up my wiring and everything else, it'd be very simple and easy to um, change things out. Change yeah. things around or add things to it. Right. Um, when I did that big central station part of mine, I've done everything in a one location and I've done it up wide in such a way that it's easy, going to be easy for me to add on to things, add right. things onto it. Particularly when I start doing the, um, um, at the signaling system. Sorry, right. I'm just trying to think. Um, yeah. cause I'm heading down the Atlas signaling system. It's pretty easy, straightforward to set up. Um, they are compatible with NCE um, units. And one thing I like about the Atlas signaling system is, look, you have your LEDs where you've got your common anode and common cathode. Um, and with the new Atlas signaling system, the unit that controls the signal, it's easy to um, just move the jumpers around to which one's which um mm -hmm. g'day mike how are you um it's all right i got i got some canadian just keeps throwing me these messages okay here's um okay um he's he's working in the background um it would be nice if he just comes up and um joins in that. yeah yeah um it's all right payback's a bitch i got his phone number too okay um so oh here's our session models um they got some remakes of stuff coming up g'day randall how are you hey what's happening uh, gents hey randall there's one um have a look, browse of what they've got coming up. Um, and you got um, Models Australia. Uh, here's another guy. Um, these guys are actually making great progress at the moment. 
These guys are making a good. I'll be right progress. back. I'm gonna run and grab my ear sticks. I for whatever reason I can't hear you guys. No, so, uh, I'll be back just in a second. Okay, take your time. Oh. Hey, Sparky, how hey, you doing? Sparky, how are you, buddy? Um, these SDS models. Now, the retailer I normally buy from is Kishua Hobbies, and he's got a good outline of new and secondhand stuff. Um, this is what I basically get all my um, you, you shop you shop with them before um, um, Thomas you bought, the casual, you bought um, you casual bought, hobbies Kashula hobbies yeah, yeah in Australia um, yeah. I that eighty percent of my stuff that I buy for my layout um, comes from Kashiwa Hobbies. He's got the best deals here in Australia. If you put the order in before one, two o'clock in the or particularly before lunchtime, our time, um, it'll be yeah. shipped that day. Yeah. Um, as long as they got it in stock, of course. Right. Um, if I put my order in today, like now. I might be lucky, he might have a ship this afternoon, but he would definitely be shipped tomorrow because um, we come up at 11 o'clock, depending on how busy he, he is. Um, yeah, I like places like that. They get, they get the product out the door right away. Yeah, yeah. Um, like they normally get down the post office by 3 o'clock in the afternoon at my time, mm -hmm. um, Sydney time. So that makes it. Uh, midnight your time so as long as you guys get it in by midnight or 11 o'clock your time at night it'd be shipped that day right. um, as long as it's not busy but right. within 24 hours bang it's gone it's, yeah. it's coming yeah when um, I bought that motor they shipped it out the next day yeah yeah, yeah. he's pretty good with that mm -hmm. um, and for little knickknacks and um Scratch building components and screws and gears, and that's one thing I've got to go up and see him about because um, I've got to re gear a couple of my engines. Um, he's got he's got a lot of that in stuff. If stock, if he hasn't got it, he'll get it in. Mm -hmm. um, I have done a video of his store and. Okay, granted, a lot of it is Australian stuff, but I mean, you've got small, you've got different um, smoke box doors, like for your 3801, you've got your different particular water pumps for your mm -hmm. steam engines or your baggy frames. Um, now, if some of you people have seen my uh, Wacky Weekend with um, Richard doing his passenger cars, like a lot of the detail parts he's got on his passenger car. We get from Kishua Hobbies because um, he's got them in stock. Um, right. Scratch building for buildings, and this is going back before the before three D printing was a big a big thing. Like you, you make things up out of styrene, mm -hmm. and then you got a deep super detail and dress mm -hmm. it all up and. Um, I'd go up there and just buy the stuff off him and go, right, I need this, this, and this, and this, particularly mm -hmm. like windows and um, right. and yeah. it, gave, it gave us an excuse to go to Liverpool too. Um, with the earth being flat, you would think we... Uh, another person that believes the earth is flat, huh? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, good one, Ray. Good one. Yeah, you would think we'd be able to just stop from top to bottom. Yeah, good one. Nice one. Yeah, April Fools was a couple of was uh, last week. Um, <laughs> 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 but um, I've got to say, he, he, he's, he's good. I mean, we do have another. We do have another store. Um, G'day, Stuart. How are you? We do have uh, Monterey Craftsmen. They do have a lot of de detail stuff as well. 
Um, he is basically importer for the NCE and ESU components. Um, the NCE, he's the um, he does a lot of the warranty right. work for the stuff that you buy on. That's why I went NCE. Um, and the hot, that, that had a big oh, the walls probably about thirty foot long. Yeah. Or just full of fine detail stuff. Yeah. Got to um, have places like that, you know? Yeah. Um, I, was in the, I was in the post office the other day, right? Two women in, in one behind me and one in front of me. They cool, started that. talking about clothes. And the lady said, oh, you're bringing, sending that back. Yeah, it wasn't, didn't fit. And the other girl goes, yeah, I know. I have that problem, too. And then the other girl went away, and I turned around to the girl behind me. I says, "That's why I don't buy clothes online because yeah. I'd, rather, I'd rather go to the store and try them on." And she says, "So would I, but it's getting harder and harder to find places now." Yeah. So, I beg to differ. I mean, I mean, I'd go to the, any any shop shopping center around here. Right. It's hard yeah, for us. I don't know what kind of clothes they're looking for. You know, I didn't know. I mean, a guy we can go to Walmart and get a pair of jeans, and I'm happy. You know, I don't have to worry about it. We have what we we have one clothing chain here called mm. Lowe's. Um, not Lowe's as in hardware's. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Earth is round, otherwise the ocean. You sure about that, right? Um, but it. It caters with just men's clothing, <laughs> which, which is good. Um, yeah, we got Kmart and we got another chain called Big W. But you go into Kmart, you got this small section for men, but two thirds of the floor is all women's clothing. Right. You go in in, this, in one of these shopping centres. Again, two thirds of the stores that are in there cater for women's clothing. Yeah, they cater to the women's clothes, right? And out of all those shops, there's only one. You know, take Kmart out of it. You just get one one store that caters for us poor men. Right. Um, if the world is flat, why is it called round trip? Because you're going around in a circle, um, Sparky. You know, look, you have a look on your screen, you get that little... Round trip. You can have a round trip to go across the United States and back again. You didn't go around. <laughs> they just call it a round trip because you, you start in one place and you end up back in the same place. That's a round trip. Yeah, but we're not going to go down. Not a round trip. Yeah. It's yeah. round trip. The letter A makes a big difference in what you're saying. Yeah, you see, you guys call it a round trip. We just call it a return trip. You right. know, it's... Right. Because that's uh, actually what it is, is a return trip. But it's... They say round trip, not a round trip. Actually, that's a good question, Sparky. Is it a straight line? There and back? That's a good question. <clears throat> it depends on the wind. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, you could end up drifting. Um, yeah, yeah, all they head need head is t-shirts, socks, and underwear. But, JD, be. I tell you what, sometimes it's hard to get that. Like, actually, I've got to go up the road and get some track pants or whatnot um, because they're coming out. Um, That's right, JD. That's all we need. Yeah. Women, on the other hand, they need a dress. They need the shoes to match the dress. They need the other attire to match that and all that. That's too much work. Oh, look, footwear, I've got three footwear. I've got my boots, my dress-up shoes, and my thongs. Sorry, flip-flops right. that I wear on my feet. That's the only three footwear. With the clothes, well, I'll wear them out until... They look like they've been to church, you know. They're all blessed, you know. We're all holy everywhere. I got um, two pair of sneakers, a pair of boots, 
my uh, motorcycle boots, flip flops for going to the beach. Put you your know, link my, up there, Sparky. Yeah, Put your link up there for your Teespring store. Um, not sure about underwear. Why well, same with the underwear? Once they start getting holy, they got all yep. elastic bands starts losing their tension. They're in the bin. No, um, they, they're good for rags. Oh, I used to use them. You know, when when you you get the dipstick, you know the oil. Yeah, oil. yeah, they were fantastic with that because it's super absorbent. You see. Um, yeah, I need to get a new t-shirt. Yeah, for some reason that material is super so super absorbent. It just yep. um commando. Now JD, now you're talking now. These have been environmentally friendly. You don't have to about you, you save on water because you don't need to do the laundry. And you don't need no um laundry detergent, so you're not polluting the water, are you? So yeah, that's not a bad idea. Um JD Commando. Mm. Uh, I might be able to get away with it here, but in the US, I don't think I'll get. Um, so, do flip flops help you stick to the. <laughs> Actually, you know what the old flip flops are good for? Um, and I'm having problems in my back room before the rain that we've had. I've noticed that. Um, to this side of the room, to the far side of the camera, when I'm normally in there, it's dropped. So the flip flops, the rubber flip flops, is just high enough for me to lift it up and put it underneath it, just to make get the make table nice and level. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, um, and that's what you do with used flip flops. I mean, it's called recycling, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what's your project? How you been going on there, um, Thomas? What's that? How's your project coming along? You winning on your project? Oh yeah. Well, mainly I'm um, working on getting my signals back in operation in the last couple of days, and I just got done with my third level. And I have a couple that aren't working. So I was just before I got on a show, I took one down and had to resolder some wires and stuff. And, uh, you know, when you take them out and you put them through the hole and you pull them out again, and the wires, uh, you pull no, matter how, no matter how good of a solder job you do, that, that um, signal wire is so thin and it if you just give it a little tug it'll snap right off of the side it's that that's how it is so but yeah i i get that too and um i don't know do you use a sink um solid core wire or do you use multi-strand um i use a stranded wire and then on the ends when i extend the, the wires i use solid because they get uh, that's the end of yeah. the into the terminal block and getting stranded into the little hole in the terminal block is a pain in the ass sometimes so the solid buys oh, yeah. right in but the is only problem right? with the terminal blocks is that those little screws sometimes they don't want to turn or it just spin 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 and the wire's stuck in there and i can't get it out and it's a they oh, make them yeah. damn cheap you know hey Floyd Robbins how are you um hey Floyd because I remember I remember the um one of the guys um I actually bumped into him yesterday uh he was an aircraft electronics engineer mm -hmm. and he's the one that told me about the soldering and the wires the wiring on the on in general like particularly what he experienced and like i kept it like in the early days when i'm i mean i not, knew how to solder everything else but you have like your phone wire and your solid state wire and i used to solder onto it and used to snap and he goes don't use that because it goes too brutal use the multi-strand one 
But he also it's a set to me, one thing he said, try to use as little solder joints as possible because wherever you sold because of why it's thin, if you end up moving it a lot, it will break a lot quicker. And it made right. a lot of sense. So ever since he's given me that tip, and this is going many years now, I try to use wherever I can the multi strand wire. Right. And it is more durable. Um because he I remember they went through um one of the old or two of the old Pan Am um Sam Four Sevens had to rewire it and they go they don't know how the thing was um working, how we didn't transmit all the the electrical signals and everything else interference out of the old aircraft. Um, because they used to work with Qantas up in Sydney and they used to be an agent for Boeing when they used to do um remodeling or reconfiguring the aircraft. The aircraft go in there and they used to do big, heavy, major rebuilds on them. Um, and he was one of the guys that worked on. Um, the systems, what you uh, the black box system that you got now that was invented up here, and the other one is the TCAS system. Um, they were the guys that actually came up with a pro with that invention that was actually done up here in Sydney in Corners. Yeah, um, is yeah. uh, he hasn't lost it, but um, he doesn't deal with it so much anymore because we right. end up having a few issues at Corners where. They've got rid of all the good stuff, the intelligent stuff, and right. all yeah, about progress. this. Hey, progress, right? <laughs> yeah, they basically kill the airline from what it used to be. I mean, they got rid of some brilliant people. Yeah. Um, the things that they used to be able to do and create. I mean, we never used to have so many drums with our with our aircraft that used to be maintained over here. Um, until it went somewhere else, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, like on my layout, when I first started doing my layout, I used solid wire all the way around for the bus line because uh, I didn't like frayed wire, right? Or stranded yeah. wire, right? Then I started watching other people's videos and stuff like that and uh, made one point. The only problem with saw wire is if it breaks, you don't know where the break is, right? Exactly. So, so then I replaced it all with, you know, stranded wire all the way around. All my bus lines are stranded wire now. Yeah. You know, some, even the feeders, I use stranded wire. What I do is like, I just tin the end that got soldered to the track. You know, that's all. Oh, you tin that right, you don't have no problem. So that's all I use. Okay, I'll probably use a little bit thicker than what most people do, but I mean, the whole thing that I've learned about 20, it is 22 gauge for the feeders. I use, yeah, um, sometimes solid if I have it, but I don't have much solid wire. Yeah, I don't, I don't either because the I get a lot of the wire from J card, I'll buy. Um, packs of rolls out of it from them, and um, what we basically do is, um, you know, working on a sneeze. Um, yeah, so, sorry, I just went to working on a sneeze, so we're gonna sneeze my head off then. Um, yeah. I'll use multi strand everywhere. Um, and that's basic. I mean, I can get the solid core wire, but again, as you said, like when you start moving the cable around or whatnot, they can break inside the insulation. You don't know right. that. And you never know where it is and you go crazy. So I said, I'm not going to deal with that anymore. And I just yanked it all out. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I managed to do that. Uh, since I done done it this, oh, that's what I was going to. I use a little bit thicker wire gauge wire on the um on the layer. It's not so much for the flow of electricity. It's as I learnt with digital. You, it's you need to have a reliable um, continuity right. to the track because you have a little packet of signals information that mm -hmm. travels along the along the um line that actually 
gives instruction to the right. decoder. And if you haven't got a nice clear run of that going through, that's when you start having complications. Right. Um, the boss is coming yeah. up. When are you going to quit, Dad? It's time for you to go do some work. <laughs> well, when I was working on my signals today, right, I had a glue. Um, I had, a lot of them I had to take out to put the <laughs> wires. And um, so I have to glue them back in place. Well, sometimes when I glue them back in place, they don't want to stand up straight. So what I was doing was taking a pair of uh, needle nose pliers and clipping it there, and that way it keeps it straight. Well, it was across the track, and I forgot about it, and I turned the system on, and I'm wondering why my EV1 is blinking. Yeah, it. yeah, it shorted it out. So I said, oh, I remember now. And then I took it off and hit the reset button, and everything was back in normal again. But that's what's nice about having it all isolated because the rest of the stuff was fine, but that one circuit was dead. So that was nice. The well, see, I, yeah. I, I, use, I use those spade um, car fuses, but I actually got it with a circuit breaker in it. Mm -hmm. And last time I was doing my layer, because I got it divided into three different sections. Um, <coughs> and I'm ready to, I'm ready to fire it up. I turn on the system, and it keeps popping keeps popping right going around and originally i went to originally when i looked at it yeah i left the pit i left uh one of the, the twisted um drills on the actual one the tracks so that well of course that was doing it yeah. and then i got the trains running fine but they get to a certain point on the layout which was up the top deck coming into the station um when he hits that hits into that section where it's been divided they start to trip again i go now what's going on <laughs> and i tell you what and that was the most frustrating because i've only just got out of surgery at that time last yeah. august and i go why is it <clears throat> tripping i could not work out what on earth it is Anyway, what I worked out, I end up going, what I've done is that section, uh, station section that I've got, which is a top layer. When I wired that up, I wired it the same way. I wired up uh, the same way it is down on the bottom. Red to me, black to the back. But, of course, the way that it loops around is supposed to be the other way around. Right right so what's happening is the new section the bottom section all the player is correct until the train comes up into that section once it goes up in that section sure it shorts out oh man what i'm going to do now i'm going to rewire everything a reverse loop no nah. Because way I wired it up, because I've done in the section, what I've done is, like I've got me um, red for me positive, black for me negative. All I did was because it's in a separate circuit, I just switched the wires around. Right. It works now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've seen that. You know, like like I I always solder the the black wire on the inside rail and the red wire on the outside rail. But sometimes it doesn't come out that way. And... Yeah, well, see, so this the thing is, I did do an um, get AFL rail ride dog away. I did, I did have a separate section with two separate transformers. Well, that gets a bit hard when you work on DCC. Um, but the way my section is done, the bottom level, the first section is done, that's one circuit. Then you go up to the top, that's a second circuit. Um, and the main peninsula area, that's the third. But I'm thinking about redoing the top area um, to have four circuits on it. But I think that's going to complex too much if something goes wrong. <coughs> um, plus, it's time consuming. So... I have three fail safes at the moment 
your first born in court and they lot you know those little colored um car fuse they've got you know the red red blues and whatnot but i've got the circuit breaker one so you self reset it um use polarity yeah that's a good idea but um yeah with me i usually just throw it away here i i've actually got a gadget that puts it on there that it, it'll put on the track and once you cross the polarity polarities it buzzes off um uh, sets a buzz uh, other buzzing sound gets annoying but yeah, yeah that worked um model uh, train reviews how are you welcome so um so my first point of call if something goes wrong in that section is it sets off that circuit breaker right now if that fails if they fail the trip i've got i've got three different file sites i've got that one then i've got the um the nce system the i can't think of the name of the bloody thing you were just talking about it um the eb1 eb1 right i've got three of them um but then i've got another one in my transformer which is uh four and a half amps it's a five amp system sorry no it is a five amp fuse um that's a five amp system so once if any of those other two fails that one will actually burn out um so i've got three systems in my layout will they work let's hope so far they have mm -hmm. um i don't know you just just you know knowing, you know you're only supposed to have one circuit breaker on a circuit right yeah yeah okay yeah yeah, yeah. um but the way it's done is like it's done up in in the sections so to speak Mm -hmm. I've got a smaller one in a graduate works down. I mean, the maximum is is five amps. Um, yeah, I ended up having two on a circuit, and I didn't know it. And because uh, um, I had a reverse loop, and I had an AR10, and it, you know, an, an AR10, yeah. and um, that has a circuit breaker on on board on that car. So what I had to do was make that a home run back to my command station with a bus line by its own bus line so that's on a separate bus line because it's yeah. a circuit breaker and that so that wouldn't affect the eb1 for the um the rest of the bus line for that track yeah. you know so i learned that but didn't do any damage or anything but um i was going through all that information from uh, the mm. ar tech trying to figure out what was going on and then I got it working, and then uh, I found I just set it up on a separate bus line so that I wouldn't have any problems. Well, the transformer that I've got that was given to me uh, when I bought the 5 amp system, it's got a small fuse, but the thing is, it's on the floor and it's awkward to get to. Um, mm -hmm. So I've already blown the fuse on that a few times. Really? And a lot of times it's getting hard to get those fuses, you know? yeah um actually that reminds me i've got to go and get some spare ones um so that's when i went to the eb1 but during the construction of this i decided i've got to do something that's going to fire before that one does you know two and a half amps and generally your locomotives whatnot particularly on a short they'll usually trip at two and a half amps right or there there are about three amps it will trip it so that stops EB, the eb1 was still work um it's only going to close the power to that section it's not going to close the power to the whole layout so anything that comes in there bang it will stop because there's a fault in there um the way i've got to work it's made so the big one that the five amp fuse doesn't blow because that's a 
bugger to get down on your hands and knees and change it. <laughs> it's worked so far. It's worked so far. I haven't had, I had, haven't had to get in and awkwardly get to that transformer. Right. It'll be set up in more better reach when I get closer to finishing it. Yeah. Well, well, it takes time. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk about time. All right. Um, Randall. Yeah. Yeah. You double stack train, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> You got them all locked into place, have you? Oh yeah, with magnets, sky magnets, and sky hooks. Well, they pretty, just got yeah. little, they just got little prongs underneath them, hold and little holes in the uh, well car. That's how they fit in place. So, yeah. Uh, that guy there, I left it out in the sun. It got a little faded. Well, you left it out in the sun, didn't you? Yeah. Well, see, with it. Th th this porch, you can't you can't see it because the camera, it's back behind the camera, but this is all windows that's back here. Even that, that's covered up right there. That's nothing but windows. So before I got these tarps and everything to cover up the windows, the sun was just coming in, shine on the layout. And, um, no. So, yeah, you leave stuff on there, it just fades it, so. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I have one window in my train room and I had 3D printed um, these guys. These are signs that I made for um, uh, identifying the signals. That's the address of the signal, right? Okay. Well, I had yeah. that up there on a layout and I had I have a, a curtain, well, not a curtain, but a, sh um, uh, a sh whatever they're called, um, blind. A blind and it's solid and I brought it all the way up to the top so I could uh, go outside and work on the layout from the back side of the window and what happened I left it that way and the next day the Sun was out and one of these things went like this <laughs> it melted it <laughs> so, that would do it yeah, yeah that'll do it so I had to replace <clears throat> that one but it's funny how that uh, so you can't make you can't make you can't 3D print something, then put it in your car and expect it to survive. The heat nah. will, just, will just melt it. Yeah, so. I know with that. I know with the heat that we've got over here. Uh, when it gets to some time here, it gets quite hot. And the yeah, answer that your 3D print, especially if you got in economy mode, we we don't use so much plastic, it will not lock quicker. Um, yeah. Well, you know the window. The, the sun come through the window that magnifies it and that just makes it more and oh they were doing we were doing um oh one 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 of the uh, mercy um training seminars that we had um in the area when the fire brigade showed us well, the emergency service showed us the temperature of what the car is like, and then they've gone back and they had look what it's like in about 15 minutes or 30 minutes of how hot it gets inside a car during during summertime. It's like an oven. Yeah. Um, no windows in the train room just for that reason. I've got two windows um, in my train room. I've got one that's like generally when I'm facing the, when I'm streaming from the um, train room, I've got one that's out to my left. Uh, it doesn't get any sunlight, but then I've got the other one and <clears> it's <throat> closed up because the sun will come in there and it gets hot. Uh, last uh, some of that room got to, I purposely had to let that room get really hot. It got to, oh, close to about 115, 120. Wow. In that room, um, but I did that on purpose. I mean, I closed the door. I did that on purpose. Mm -hmm. I mean, as stupid as it sounds, um, because when I laid the track on the new section, I laid it during winter. Of course, we all know what happens to metal, right? Um, during the winter time, it shrinks. Now I did leave gaps in my what I 
generally the left gaps on my rail. Now, I let the room get hot to see the expansion and see if I'd end up getting any buckling or um, kinks in the rail in the track work. And also with the wood that I use, because I use a thinner ply and on this other material that I've got next to nothing. What it's going to do during the heat is it going to warp and twist and everything else, you know. Touch wood, everything was fine. The gaps that I had, you could just still only just get the fingernail in between it, so... My gaps were just right. There was no kinking, no nothing. But now while it's still warm, um, I still get the warmth up in that room with a new section of track that I'm laying down. I want to, I'm want. i going to do the same gap. And then I'll know it's not going to... Um, nothing worse than once you've got everything laid down, start doing the scenery and you start getting that track buckling and twisting and... Oh. Anyway, guys, um, I'm going to cut it short. I've got to get some more work done because um, I've only got basically 24 hours before my ride comes in here. How far away is that they have to go to on Saturday? How far away? Hours. Um, Not miles, hours. How many hours is it? With us going by truck, it's going to be a 17-hour trip. Yeah. Um. Because we've got to have our breaks in between. Yep. Um, again, people, sadly, I will not uh, go buy a shirt. I, I will there, uh, Sparky. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I just got the frog in my throat. Um, yeah, go and get one of Sparky's T-shirts. But I've got to get one that's got cancelled on it because I couldn't make it. Um, again, for people, for those that normally see my streams on the weekend, I will not be streaming this weekend. I know um, Anthony Dodge, he's going to be out of the way. I will not be live streaming from Tell Me Live uh, um, for his Steam Festival. Unfortunately, I have to go to a funeral, a very good close work buddy and colleague um he's part of the truck and road train community from out back he had a massive accident last week um we're going down to give him pay our last respects to him um you know jd you know jd so sorry i will not be doing any streaming this weekend uh that comes first that takes over precedence over everything I enjoy everybody for coming in here. Thank you for joining in. Thank you, Thomas, for being here. Randall, thank yep. you very much. You Appreciate it, Artie. Appreciate you bringing me up, Artie. We'll see yeah. you all later. Everybody yeah, have I'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. And Artie, yeah. best wishes, and uh, sorry for your loss. Thanks, guys. Okay, guys, so um, have fun. Be safe. We'll see and you all. See you guys soon. See you guys. I'm going to drop 